In this lesson, we'll look at the mechanisms for the payoff phase of glycolysis, the last five steps in which net ATP is produced. If you're looking for the mechanisms of any of the reactions in the energy investment phase of glycolysis, those are in part one, and you can check out that video. All right, let's look at some mechanisms. In the sixth step of glycolysis, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is converted to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase, and that name, along with the fact that the coenzyme NAD plus is involved, lets us know that this enzyme is an oxidoreductase. We're going to see some redox chemistry. An active site cysteine and a histidine are our catalytic residues. Acting as a base, histidine will deprotonate the thiol of cysteine. And a lone pair on sulfur can attack this carbon in a carbonyl addition reaction. The arrow pushing looks like this. The lone pair on nitrogen attacks the hydrogen. And we can show the hydrogen-sulfur bond forming a bond to this carbon as we push the electrons from the double bond up onto oxygen. This gives an intermediate that's covalently bound to the enzyme. Now the coenzyme NAD+, which is bound to the enzyme through weak interactions, can come into play. Notice the positively charged nitrogen in the aromatic ring. This allows for bonds to break that we usually wouldn't think about breaking, like we saw in step four with the aminium ion promoting the cleavage of a carbon-carbon bond. Now we're going to see cleavage of a carbon-hydrogen bond. To facilitate this, a base will deprotonate here, allowing electrons to form a carbonyl, and that will push hydrogen off with its electrons. Our base deprotonates this hydrogen, the electrons form a carbonyl, and hydride, a hydrogen with its electrons, can reduce NAD+. Attack on the ring occurs exactly opposite the positively charged nitrogen, and we can use the electrons in the conjugated system to neutralize the positive charge. NAD plus is aromatic but charged, and the reduced form, NADH, is neutral but non-aromatic because of this sp3 hybridized carbon right here. The other product that we form from this part is going to be an enzyme-bound thioester. Thioesters are reactive intermediates that can undergo nucleophilic acyl substitution. So in this case, we're going to have a molecule of inorganic phosphate enter the active site. This isn't a high-energy phosphate compound like ATP is, but when we substitute this phosphate for this sulfur, we're going to get BPG, which has even higher phosphoryl transfer ability than ATP. Nucleophilic acyl substitution is an addition elimination mechanism. So first we'll use the negative charge on our phosphate to attack the carbonyl. The electrons push onto oxygen and we get this intermediate. Notice the phosphate group loses its proton after the attack. At physiological pH, Phosphate groups ionize to carry a negative 2 charge. The tetrahedral intermediate that we form will collapse, kicking out sulfur as a leaving group. Remember, in this step, we protonated histidine, so we can use the charged imidazole to give sulfur its proton back. The tetrahedral intermediate collapses, this carbon-sulfur bond breaks, and this nitrogen of histidine gets its lone pair back, and we form this bisphosphate that has high phosphoryl group transfer ability. Let's break down the reaction types we saw throughout this mechanism. Overall, this is an oxidation, but in the first step, we have nucleophilic addition to a carbonyl. Since we're losing electrons from this substrate along the way, that's oxidation. Remember that our NAD plus is reduced in the process. Finally, we convert our thioester into the phosphate. That's nucleophilic acyl substitution. The enzyme that catalyzes step seven of glycolysis is phosphoglycerate kinase. This enzyme is actually named for the reverse reaction where we'd think about adding a phosphate group 
to 3-phosphoglycerate, but we'll look at the reaction in the glycolysis direction. This reaction in vivo is reversible. This mechanism is nice and straightforward. ADP will attack this phosphate and kick the electrons onto oxygen. And with the transfer of this phosphate group, we form ATP. The enzyme is therefore classified as a transferase, and the type of reaction is nucleophilic substitution. When we transfer a phosphate group to ADP from a compound that has higher phosphoryl transfer ability, this is called substrate level phosphorylation. Step 8 of glycolysis is an isomerization reaction that'll move this phosphate from the 3 position to the 2 position of the compound, forming 2-phosphoglycerate from 3-phosphoglycerate. This reaction has a really cool mechanism. The enzyme actually contains a post-translationally modified histidine that is phosphorylated. An active site glutamate residue deprotonates this hydrogen. The electrons from this bond attack the phosphate, which breaks off of the histidine, temporarily forming an intermediate with two phosphate groups. To return the enzyme to its active state, the now dephosphorylated histidine will attack this phosphate group, and our glutamate residue that was protonated here can now donate this proton to reform an alcohol. The arrow pushing looks like this. Histidine attacks. The electrons from this oxygen-phosphorus bond grab the proton on glutamic acid, and the electrons from the OH bond become a lone pair on glutamate. This enzyme is isomerizing 3-phosphoglycerate and is classified as an isomerase. But to do these phosphate transfers, we're using nucleophilic substitution reactions. With the phosphate group now at the 2 position, the enzyme enolase will convert 2-phosphoglycerate into phosphoenolpyruvate. Phosphoenolpyruvate has higher phosphoryl transfer ability than ATP, so we're setting ourselves up for another substrate level phosphorylation by forming this compound. The name enolase suggests formation of an enolate. Here's a carbonyl, and we can form an enolate adjacent to it. The lone pair on a deprotonated lysine will deprotonate this hydrogen, and the electrons will move onto the carbon adjacent to the carbonyl. The enolate that's formed has resonance stabilization with the carbonyl. Because of this resonance stabilization, it's very likely that this anion forms first, and then the OH group is eliminated in an E1CB reaction. A protonated glutamic acid side chain donates a proton on this hydroxyl group's way out. The arrow pushing looks like this. With the double bond here and the OH eliminated, we've formed PEP. The enzyme is breaking off a molecule of water, so it's classified as a lyase, and the reaction type is elimination, very likely E1CB. At this point in glycolysis, energetically, two ATP have been consumed and two ATP were produced, one for each molecule of BPG. Now we'll get our final payoff when pyruvate kinase catalyzes a second substrate level phosphorylation, transferring the phosphate from PEP to ADP forming ATP and pyruvate. I'll show this mechanism in two ways. ADP is going to attack this phosphate, and we're going to get shifts of electrons that end up with protonation of this CH2. So let's add in a generic acid. We'll begin our arrow pushing on a negatively charged oxygen of ADP attacking this phosphate. Notice pyruvate has a ketone. When we break this bond, we'll push it to make that ketone, and now the carbon-carbon double bond can break, becoming protonated. That's a lot of arrow pushing for one step, and viewing the arrow pushing slightly differently can help us see why PEP 
is such a great transfer of this phosphate group. So let's just attack the phosphate and leave a negative charge on this oxygen instead. The compound that will form showing the attack this way is an enolate. Now enols and enolates tend to tautomerize to their more stable keto forms. So this tautomerization is also pushing this reaction forward. We'll bring in our generic acid and show the arrow pushing for our final protonation from here. Again, we're transferring a phosphate group and the enzyme is a transferase. Because we're substituting a new phosphate group onto ADP, this reaction type is nucleophilic substitution. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. For more chemistry and biochemistry, subscribe to my channel.